You ready? I was born ready. Oh dear. That's a that's bad start. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello, and welcome back to another episode of DTH Reviews. There you go, that's has 30 new likes instantly from our dislike bar. Uh, today we are doing Saints Row 4. Uh, not many of you will probably realise, but a few of you will, that we've already gone off our uh, off our promise schedule. But uh, we'll talk about that in the uh, in the outro, because we don't want to take up time now, but you know. Okay, so Saints Row 4. Uh, I think the first thing that uh, everyone thinks about when they think about Saints Row 4, if you haven't played it, I think if you've seen any E3 footage, uh, etc is uh, is the superpowers. I think that was the thing that stands out most when it was illustrated. I think most people would have heard of the uh, the Saints Row series, and uh, it's definitely underplayed. I personally think compared to uh, the GTA series, I think more people should play it. Even you, sir, you, you claim to be a video game player, and you've only played one of them until this one. Eh, I played like an hour of Saints Row 2 when it came out. <laughs> Saints Row 2 was glorious sure. in every single way. Yeah. It was absolutely fantastic. And uh, one was good as well, in its own little right. It deserves its place in there. It deserves respect, mainly me. It deserves respect. Yeah, okay. James Whatever time. you say, boss. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if you... It's funny you say everybody thinks of the superpowers when you say Saints Row 4. I only thought that there was going to be fast, fast running and high jumping. I didn't really pay any attention to any of the footage. I, yeah. Because I knew I was going to play it. Everyone knows uh, that Saints Row is batshit crazy. And I think... Yeah. That is a fact, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so when I... Uh, I mean, I, I don't know if how batshit crazy it was prior to Saints Row the Third, though. Not as I mean, I batshit crazy. No, that's what I was... That's what I thought. But that's... Um, Saints, Row yeah. Thirds, Saints Row the Third's pretty crazy. Saints Row Four is, like, on another level of crazy. Yeah, absolutely bonkers. Um, I, I yeah. guess they just found their... They found the success, and they found what their fans enjoyed. And they thought... Uh, there's no evidence that this is the last one, but um, I think they really wanted to top it off with. I can't. I can't imagine anything crazier than uh, what this game does. To be honest with you. Yeah. So. This, yeah. And yeah, it somehow feels like the completely logical direction for it to go in because <laughs> by the end of Saints Row the Third, when you upgraded everything, you almost broke the game. You were so powerful, and then this, they just let you break the game in the first hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I love the fact that they just. Uh, you know, they go through the whole car tutorial and customizing cars, and then they just give you super sprint and you never get in your car ever <laughs> yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. I use a car like, twice. That's one of the, the game, funniest yeah. things in the whole game is that they just completely undermine so many of their gameplay systems by introducing these other things. So I think, yeah, the... the, the well, I, I think I generalized a bit by saying like, that's what everyone thinks about, but I think what stood up for me when I was looking at footage was uh, the new element, was, was superpowers. And... Uh, I wasn't sure if it was just going to be a gimmick or not, but um, I think they they tweaked it really well. Um, You'll be seeing footage of, footage of it now. It's um it's very 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 satisfying and very clean. If that makes any sense, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, uh, the flow of it, uh, the way you use it, it takes a bit of getting used to as well, which I liked. It took about not long, about say about an hour hour practice to get the timing of when to glide and when to let go of the glide, if you want to land where you want to. And by the end of the game, you were, you were pretty agile. Oh, yeah. You were pretty accurate. And uh, it felt, felt very satisfying. It's probably the best superhero game uh, since Infamous 2, I'd say. Uh, because Like, Infamous 2 is just a ton of fun to play. And this is probably the most fun I've had playing a game in a while. Just because it's... Yeah, the superheroes are way deeper than I thought they would be. Like, in all the different elements and upgrades and the fluidity of it all is pretty surprising. Have you played a uh, prototype? No. That's uh, that's what it was most reminiscent of. Uh, all the wall running, the dashing, the gliding. That's all uh, all prototype. Interesting. And it was uh, there's one section we'll talk about in a second, which is very reminiscent of Crackdown. But um, I think Saints Row is one of those games that can kind of just copy. It could copy yeah. anything. It is. It started as a GTA clone, and you just don't care. Well, it's because uh, you don't take it seriously. In any yeah, way. like copying from really good games. There's not. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, all the, all other, mm. like movies do it all the time, and books do it all the time. And what's wrong with uh, a game stealing, you know, huge parts of Mass Effect Two and Crackdown? <laughs> I don't think that <laughs> if it makes it ridiculous. Yeah, it just it makes for a weird, super surprising, sort of super game. 
of like all your favorite <laughs> games in one, I think, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm talking about one thing that's very reminiscent of Crackdown. And I have, I have to bring up, I have to bring up the clusters early because this was, I had no idea this was in the game, and this was honestly my kryptonite. When I, as soon as I saw it, I knew this is going to burn about five hours of my life, and that is uh, the classic. It, it started in Crackdown, the agility orbs, mm -hmm. where there's little shiny things on rooftops, and you collect them, and then they make you more powerful. And I saw them, and I was like, oh God, I hope there's, uh, I hope there's not too many of these because I'm going to have to collect them all. There are so many. Oh. There's 1,200 of them. There's 1,200 of them in the bloody game. And it, oh my god. And I'm like 100 away from getting them all. Oh god, what am I doing with my life? I'm very impressed, yeah. I was a bit under 1,000 uh, when I finished it. But I'm very... <laughs> I'm very impressed with your effort. I yeah, you collectibles usually don't do anything for me, but these are just so bright and glowy and easy to pick up and there's just so many of them. Oh man. It never stopped getting old. And the little sound you get when you pick them up, it's And it did a clever thing where you oh. need certain powers to say unlock uh certain orbs. Not orbs, uh clusters, sorry, later on in the game. So you almost like come back and you think you've cleared out an area and then there's tons more and Oh, it's just Oh, it was addicting. It was addicting to hell. It was, uh, I can't, I can't tell if I liked it or not, because I couldn't stop collecting them. I had a, That's I was, probably a good thing. Yeah. I was just gleefully enjoying it, but then at the same time, I was angry about how, <laughs> how addicted I was to getting them, and how they'd sucked me in. And, um, before we move on, they, I didn't know that they, uh, reused the same city from Saints Row the Third. Uh, until I, I like a week before the game came out. Yeah. And that was initially a little like, wow, that's kind of lazy almost, you know, just like mm. they've reused the exact same environment from last time. Okay, well, that's going to be a little bit more boring, but uh, the superpowers and the really make it feel like a different environment because you can oh, yeah. run to the top of any building in like five seconds and you see the whole city from so many different angles that you never saw before. And they do some really good stuff with like the aesthetics, you know, making it look glitchy and, and <laughs> different enough. But I was really surprised by how fresh the city felt just because you could get around it so differently. I did not recognize it as the same city in any way. I had yeah. no idea. It's basically like if they gave you a helicopter from the first like one hour of the game, basically, and you could explore the rooftops within like 20 minutes. It was yeah. Uh, you get to see it from a different light. So, uh, yeah, I know it sounds lazy, but it, it worked. I see why they did it, and I get it. I think, yeah, I think when it comes down to it, the only complaint I ever really had about the game, in terms of gameplay, was the boss fights. Yeah, I said it in the Bioshock Infinite review. Boss battles suck. Yeah, maybe that was a call to the future. Yeah, the boss fights were just... Yeah, they were just sort of a nuisance. Well, they it's like, suck, I just yeah. want to not suffer through this long fight. I just want to see more of the story. So, yeah, it's sort of a nuisance that they're there, but... Because the, the combat was actually pretty varied and pretty entertaining. So it was a shame when you got to these boss fights and they were just ab they just sat there absorbing bullets after bullets. It was just shoot at this guy, yeah. Because, you know, with the powers and these different guns, you could really <laughs> vary up the combat. You could sprint into people and send cars into them, and it was it was really fun. So I thought the boss fights were a shame. I, I want to say that the first, say, about four hours of this game were probably some of the most fun I've had in video game history. I was just giddy. Absolutely. The first hour and a half intro is like <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> and you know and then the last sort of couple hours are also yeah. pretty pretty spectacular and then it's in between there are some really funny really creative <laughs> moments as well like i think the funniest part of the whole game <clears throat> was during pierce's loyalty mission uh let me let me think I did it yesterday and uh in <laughs> In between going to the objectives, you sit in his car uh, and drive. Oh, and yes, that was together. great. That was so good. I think the funniest part of that whole game was when they sing that yeah. Marquis song and Zinyak, come, Zinyak comes on and interrupts yeah, them all. It was, uh, I almost died. I don't know why, but it was just the little things like that are so funny in this game. Daddy, yeah. And you say he's just a friend. But you say he's just a friend. Oh, oh baby. baby. Hell no! 
Zinyak fucked with Biz Marquis. Man, I can't wait to kill that bitch. I don't know if this. I don't know if we should save this for a spoiler, but the the Mass Effect two aspects of the game. Oh yeah, that's what you know, the Mass Effect Mass Effect romance. Let's just leave it at that. The Mass Effect romance oh God, thing so funny. is incredible. It is. Like you exit the simulation and you get onto this ship and you realize like, and all your your crew members are there. And it's like, oh, okay, this is kind of like the Normandy. And then you go up to your crew members and you realize you can talk to them. There's one button that says talk to them, and then the other option is just romance, romance them. Hey, Kinsey, you want to fuck? Let's go. And there are no prerequisites required like Mass Effect 2 or anything. You just press a button and you get it on with that person. <laughs> Any of them. And they don't even care, like, if male or female. It doesn't robot. matter. They find a way. And it's <laughs> yeah. a robot. Yeah. It's, yeah. Amazing. Spoilers! Don't watch. All right, this is your this is your spoiler warning. We're gonna be talking about anything that affects the story or just in general that we think should not be spoiled for you. Um, you did mention. I know you did mention the boss fights. Uh, which how many boss fights were there? There were like three or oh, two or three, oh, right? There was the one against e the evil version of you, which uh, was pretty boring. Yeah, it was terrible. And then the terrible. final boss fight uh, was pretty funny. Jesus. I, uh, oh, I hated I hated it so much. You have no idea. I got through sort of like the first volley of attacks from him and then mm. died. And then we started the checkpoint. And he got stuck on the ceiling. <laughs> I got stuck in the floor at one point as well. He got stuck on the ceiling and I was able to oh. get him to his final stage in about 10 seconds. Uh, oh, no fair, man. I struggled so much. So I didn't really have any problem with that boss fight, but uh, the ending of that game, holy shit. Oh. After the credits, yeah. when you get, like, you, the game starts and every once in a while there's some narration by this British lady and you have no idea who she is. And, and then at <laughs> yeah, the end of the cool. game, the fact that it's... Zinyak has traveled back in time and grabbed all these famous, you know, people from the past. And the person that's been narrating Saints Row 4 is Jane Austen. Jane Austen. Yeah, that was, that was cool. Oh. Such a weird twist, isn't it? It's so the random. The one twist in the game yeah, is like, Jane Austen is the commentator. Yeah. What did you think about the world blowing up, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> that was interesting, wasn't it? Yeah, it was just like in the first hour, the world just blows up. The whole world And no one seems up. to care all that much. <laughs> yeah. Like there's They're like oh, there man. are many instances where like uh, where the president is talking to Keith David, Vice President Keith David, which is just I just love the fact that it's just Keith David playing himself. Yeah. Um, and you know Keith David will say something like, "Oh, remember that time back in Boise and how horrible it was, and we almost screwed over and pissed off all these people in America." And then the president just says, "Well, we don't have to worry about that anymore. <laughs> Earth's gone. <laughs> yeah. Like nobody seems to give a shit that Earth blew yeah. up. It's great. Yeah. Uh, when you rescue Pierce and like, uh, can't wait to get back to Earth. Oh yeah, they blew it up. <laughs> yeah. And the um. The streets of streets of rage level was pretty fantastic. Oh yeah, some of the some of the levels. Some of the levels are really really, really, really creative, really varied and really well paced. Yeah, really, I thought it was really well done. They managed to change things up so consistently and in so many different ways. It, it, that's really the fun of the game. Like the story is, you know, pretty predictable. the The fun is seeing what sort of craziness they come up with for their for each level. Okay, so let's let's do a conclusion. Let's do a conclusion. You go first. Want to wrap it up? Give your rating. I give this game five whopping stars out of five because it is f***ing awesome. <laughs> That's all I can say. It's wonderful, and I can understand if someone might say it's kind of like an expansion pack, but I just I'm so glad it exists, and there are so few games like it out there. I just I can't get enough of it. People should play it. Uh, I, I, yeah, I completely, I completely agree. Like, if we were, if we were professional review, I know some people say this isn't really a review; it's more of a discussion. But if we were professional, you know, critics, we'd have to rate it down because of bugs and because of presentation. But it, it's just so goddamn fun. So it gets yeah. whopping five stars without even trying. <laughs> five. Easy peasy. <laughs> it's so good. Like, I love Saints Row the Third, and I know you don't love it as much, but I. I adore Saints Row the Third, I love, and this I love just it. takes everything that was glorious in Saints Row the Third and multiplies it by ten, and it works so well. If you like laughing, yeah. smiling, and having fun, definitely pick up this game. Uh, okay, should we do our should we do a little outro? Yeah, you can explain why this review is late. <laughs> <laughs>
some of you might notice that this this review is a couple of days late. Uh, we explained in the last episode. Uh, I w I was away. I was away on important business. If business is uh, watching music in a field, uh, so we will try and get back on track. Um, we're not going to promise anything this time. I regret uh, <laughs> saying putting our schedule at the beginning, saying we're going to do payday and then we're going to do saints because, yeah, uh, we're rubbish. So we won't do a schedule. We'll basically what we should say is we'll put a block of games that we're going to do. Yeah. And we'll do them when we can do them, basically. Yeah, and we're going to also do, like, maybe even two reviews a week every once in a while where we have, like, a bigger game and a smaller game, so... Yes, we're, yes. Our, uh, next block, yeah. our next block of games is going to be something like Gone Home, Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, Splinter Cell, Rayman, and GTA V, right? Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. And maybe Payday 2 if you can get a hold I, of I'll it. I'll keep trying to get Payday 2. I've had trouble getting it. Like my laptop yeah. can't afford, uh, handle it, but yeah, uh, let's quickly set up some some indie devs. As you just said, have been kind enough to give us some codes to review, so they will they will be coming along. Obviously, they will not be our feature review. They will kind of be like a little extra short little review. So hopefully, you guys will enjoy yeah. that. We'll do a test one, and see what you guys think, and uh, yeah, look forward to that. Ah, famous movie quotes. 